Hello everyone and welcome to another vital sound design tutorial from me and Mimi who just now decided to jump over my shoulder and now she's going. In this video we will be um, I will be discussing how to make you know some sort of a dark cinematic drone kind of a uh, Hans Zimmer like uh, which uh, well which was that which I was asked to do from uh, someone of you in a comment to a video which I had released a couple of months ago. So without any further ado, let's get going. So here we are with Vital and with the sound that I was asked about in the video a couple of months ago, actually this sound, uh, which... which was in my Vital and Atmospheric uh, pack, which you can still find on my Gumroad. Now, uh, I wish I could easily make a tutorial on how to make this sound uh, step by step, but I can't. And the reason I can't is that uh, there's um, no way I'm gonna remember or find out what I made these two wavetables out of. But the good news is uh, I don't really need to. I mean, the mo most of the most of the things are, well, yeah, the character is gonna be slightly different, but most of the of the whole sound is really, is really well, kind of straightforward. So let's start, let's initialize the preset and uh, say, well, let's start from oscillator three, which uh, how I had set up it in the other patch. So uh, apparently it looked like just a sawtooth wave, but there was a slight, slight difference. I had added a phase shift and uh, of course another keyframe so that it did something. And, uh, you know, let's mess it up and turn it into something different. So uh, the whole point with this is going as far as creating uh, something akin to, um, you know, like pulsed width modulation on a saw wave. But actually, this was this I forgot about this. Plus even minus odd. What happens here? That it does this. If I have to make it happen a lot, it does this effect, this sort of phasing effect, which. Uh, when you start adding a little bit of unison and maybe a lot less detuning and maybe if we also add some table spread and we make this so that there is a center drop 12 what does this do we have five voices and one will be one octave lower in the center and now What we get is something akin to this, uh, with a little more unison. Well, not more unison, actually, with a little more detuning. It gets even more dramatic. Of course, this is going to be filtered, and that's basically what filter one is going to be doing. The only thing I'm going to send to filter one is exactly this very. So I'm going to set the key track to the max and get it lower. So that it is just this dark thing, and then modulate it with the mod wheel. So that when I want to, I can open it and give it this sort of. Oh, you understand what this is. Then, well, this was done. Let's go for the other two oscillators. The other two oscillators were a couple of complex wavetables, as I already, as I already mentioned. There's several ways to get to a wavetable. To wavetables like that or at least with table suitable for this kind of sounds one way is just you know open up your wavetable editor and mess it up seriously mess it up make it kind of a mess and see if you're happy with that mess if you're not well you do a different mess uh, I'm saying uh, this is uh, th there's there's probably some sort of a deterministic way to go through making wavetables, but there's there's a, a lot of what you get out of those is mostly you know happy accidents, random walking, and uh, well I I know for sure a bunch of uh, very respected uh, sound designers actually do the very same thing, but. Uh, 
probably quicker way to get to something in this direction is using audio. So I'll get, you know, I have some samples here which come from the Iris Isotope, from the Isotope Iris, sorry, library, and they're just samples. This thing, or let's go for this, this airy thing. Yes, nice airy thing. And I could actually just send it to drop it into the wave table, but I'm gonna go for a slightly different approach. I'm gonna get put, put this into the sampler, but then I'm gonna send this to filter two, and I'm gonna set filter two to be a comb filter. Why am I doing this? Well, because I want to give it a strong or at least, you know, intelligent fundamental. See? And then once I have give, give, given this some fundamental, I'm um, you know, gonna decide how many, how, how much high frequency content I want. You see, now the fundamental of this is gonna be this of the filter, no matter what, and I can actually repitch this. to add content in the lower region and make the whole the whole thing move slower. So now that I've done this, I can just say that I want to resynthesize this to a table. It always does this audio glitch anytime I resynthesize and every time I resynthesize while making a video, I forget it does it. So now here we have a wave table and let's see how it sounds. Now this LFO is controlling oscillator tree waveframe and uh, well we can leave it there. We're gonna go for a second LFO and see how this set it to seconds so that I can resynthesize again. Uh, let's see enter value four and no it's four seconds. See, there's a lot of high frequency content, which is kind of good, but there's a little too much. I can do this four month scaling to make it more suitable, more like more the way I want it to be. And now all I can do, well, all another thing I can do is resynthesize it again and have that, again that glitch. And now I have a wavetable sounding like this, which can work as somehow the mid-range of our sound. This too will have some unison set to it. And I can add some table spread to this one as well. Maybe more unison, maybe more table spread. <laughs> Just find out your sweet spot. And this is one, uh, I might want another one. Like, say, I'm gonna get some other... This thing here. Terrible, isn't it? Let's see how it fares if I just set it here and pitch splice and then I'll see, you see this thing, there's, there's not much happening except in a small region and we're gonna just get that small region, no, not that small, but kind of small region and see if we like what we get. If we don't, I'm just gonna go for another sample. Uh, I kind of like this, yes. I'm gonna go again and form and scale it. Let's get this one again. I don't like the fact that the beginning here I picked a place where nothing was happening. There's, there has to be something everywhere. I mean, it's not nice. better, right? So now this too is gonna have some unison. And yep, I'm going to yes, remove the unison for now and resynthesize again. Now I have resynthesized it. Let's remove the four month scale here. Let's remove the four month scale here as well. And now let's see. If
it's there somehow. Now I'm gonna get this back to be on tempo and I'm gonna make it slower. And I'm gonna make these two remaps slightly different so that, you know, it's to the max, but it's not linear. Let's say we actually want it to be like a triangle, but not like a symmetrical triangle. Why am I doing this? So that I make sure, you know, the, the whole thing goes from the beginning and goes back. There's no abrupt changes. and add some stereo to this LFO so it will all be in different spots in different times. Let's get this some unison again. And we're already getting somewhere. Now, uh, in that sound, I had used here another filter, which was a formant filter. It's just an idea. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying it, it has to be done this way. It's just the way I did that sound. It's just, you see, this allows us to have, uh, you know, to give it some sort of a, I don't, you know, I'm not gonna have these key tracked so that I have this sort of a, I'm sending this one and I'm gonna send also. Let's add the mod, we'll move this thing a little bit, not much. Let's give it a little less peak and maybe not mix them to the to 100%. And now we have most of the sound sorted out. There's a few more things to do. Now, first of all, this is completely deterministic. You know, it's you, you play a sound. The only thing which isn't deterministic is the relative phase of every voice, but uh, that's, that's really not saying much. We might want this sound to have some generative component to it. And how do we get that? Well, we can go and make sure, for example, there is something being done by random generators. So uh, we can have up to four random generators, which would be a lot. But let's say I'm just going to use one, for example, here to control the position on this wavetable, or maybe since I'm using it, I'm using this LFO to control it to control the phase of this of this LFO. So now I go here. Let's make this one stereo. Let's make it sample and hold, and make it faster. And then we can do, we can add more stuff saying I have this second random generator. I'm going to use it here to control the stereo opening of my LFO. I could actually get this back to zero, but make this thing bipolar. And we got something. Now, uh, there's this thing here, which in my opinion seems to have a little bit too much higher harmonics as well. So I'll let, just drop this one octave down. I'm happier with this, yes. Now, uh, to make it clear, I'm really, uh, I didn't really prepare this for you that entirely. You know, I'm just r going around and having you see my workflow while I do this type of sounds. And so we have something like this. Now uh, we can add more randomness. Yes, this one is in eighths and it's in uh, sample and hold. This one is in fourths and it's Perlin. Let's make this one stereo too. Oh, yeah, if I make this stereo, it will make stereo the the stereo modulation here, which is a weird thing to do. But uh, I really don't know what happens if I do that. I'm doing it anyway. Um, so uh, since I did this, and I actually might want this to be a little less prominent, I can use this one also to modulate, say, this 
which is uh, one of the, you know, this, what does this do? This controls the relative position of these peaks. Maybe I could want the mod wheel too, to control it. And then, now that I have all this set up, you can have a little bit more randomness and uh, movement in your patch. Maybe I could want this one too to control this other parameter and make it bipolar and also make it stereo so that actually I don't need to make it stereo. It is automatically stereo because the source is stereo. And we have this thing which has a, a definite time time scanning in the sense that, you know, there is this thing happening in 16th, actually in 8th because of this. Let's make it 16th. And we have a sound like this. Now, uh, this is just the beginning. As you can see, there's still no effects, none at all. And now we're gonna put them with some effects here. Now, uh, let me just go here and reduce the oversampling. Uh, I doubt you will notice any difference because, you know, you're just listening to this from YouTube and uh, there's really not gonna be that much saturation so that this actually would make a significant difference. But, but well, I do it and because my, my PC isn't that powerful or modern anymore. And then I'm gonna put some reverb, which is of course, well, almost mandatory in a sound like this. I'm using this reverb, which is, which has a well, quite a CPU bite. And uh, well, I wouldn't say it sound, sounds bad because it doesn't sound bad, but it really isn't the best reverb I've heard. So if you have some better reverbs, you know, there's plenty, even free ones, even just Valhalla Supermassive, which on a sound like this, use with discretion would do great. And there's a bunch of other options. I don't know if you want me to discuss reverbs, I can discuss reverbs too, but that's really not my thing. At least not the thing of this channel. And now we have this deep sounding, this sort of sound in a massive resounder sounding cave. And well, why not some delay too, and maybe reducing the spread so that we have the delay happening just in the mid highs in the mid high section and let's make it stereo. And well, these are well the effects I would consider wouldn't say mandatory, but well, really important in a sound like this. Uh, others, well, th there's plenty more possibilities. Now, uh, there's you could go for flangers and phasers. And actually I have in that other sound, but you see both of these if well, let's go for one. See, if you have a phaser to 100%, no matter what you do, what your sound is gonna sound like is like, well, some, some crap going through a phaser. Uh, it, you know, it has a tendency to dominate the character of the sound. And the same goes with the flanger. Yeah, it does sound a lot like a flanger. I mean, uh, would we really want it to sound that much like a flanger? Not necessarily, right? So let's have a different amount of flanger, let's say a lot less, maybe even more feedback. And now, so we have two more LFOs somehow, if I turn the phaser on too. that influence the character of our sounds and, you know, its behavior over time. Now, uh, in that other sound, I had used some distortion as well. This is probably the only thing which will might annoy you since I've reduced the oversampling, but uh, hopefully it won't. Well, you see, don't overdo it, but... Uh, 
a little of distortion can really go a long way. If you don't want to distort everything, well, one thing you can do, and I think you should, is since you see this part of the sound, the one which is being low passed, is somehow the most, uh, well, the one on which you might want more distortion. I mean, the rest sounds harmonically rich enough to my to my ears at least so let's go just let's just keep it on this analog model and i'm um, just gonna this you know gives it a slightly more you know well saturated sound that's exactly what it does and well kind of this was it this was the the whole thing or well somehow an approach you know i i got a different sound from the one i was starting from but i got somewhere close uh i could still want to add that distortion and i could do more things in that other sound i had used the post filter and I had reduced the resonance and I also had added my mod wheel to control this one too. Of course, well, once you want it, to, you know, if you want it to be playable, you might want the envelope the, the, the amp envelope to be a little more gentle because of course you would you would like it to rise I don't even say slowly but you know not not that abruptly as it was now uh, this as far as making this type of sound goes well I wouldn't say it's all I can say because there's there's really a lot more I mean this this filter choice was I wouldn't say arbitrary but well it was just a choice I could have gone for um, a phaser filter or a comb filter or yeah, I always go for comb filters or more other possibilities I mean there's you know I, or no filter at all I mean wouldn't wouldn't really sound that bad it's just that says that it seemed to me like a good idea to put this filter here and I liked it maybe I don't know let's go for the other <laughs> you decide which one do you like more uh, then uh, well uh, another thing I might want to mention since I'm talking about this sort of idea of cinematic drones is I can talk you to you about shepherd tones and um, there's there's a lot that actually could be said about shepherd tones you can make them with any synthesizer which has at least three oscillators or actually make them using three different oscillators from three different synthesizers and making a well a quite a complex set of modulations but uh, lucky enough uh, vital offers us this thing you know we can just set every single oscillator to have a shepherd to be a shepherd tone and how does this work let me get them all to zero but then get an LFO to set like this and much slower again maybe no maybe I don't I don't want to use LFO 3 I'm fine with using LFO 1 it's already modulating this thing but I don't see why I would be annoyed by doing this as well so uh, what I'm gonna do here is you see if I do this You get this sense of a constantly rising pitch and you see it doesn't it's very good in the fact that if you do it slow enough it seems seamless you see it's clearly an illusion there's a pitch that is growing it is actually done with three different pitches there's I could explain in details what it is but I wouldn't be doing justice to a bunch of other youtubers who bother doing that before me so that believe me YouTube has plenty of knowledge about what shepherd tones are. Thing is, Vital offers you a, a way of doing it. I, I don't know of any other synth who does that so immediately, but it does you offers you a chance to do it very quickly and with no what well, would really I mean it's really foolproof. If you go the other way. The other way around you will get the sensation of a 
increasing pitch, you know, a falling tone instead of a rising one. It creates a different type of tension. Well, it all depends on what your needs are, your emo the emotional needs for your tracks are. Uh, but you can do more, you see, with this thing, which is a sort of an acoustic barber, spinning barber pole, you know, or an Asher's ladder staircase, not a ladder. It's a much more complicated to make an Asher's, Asher's ladder. Anyway, uh, another thing you can do is making sure these things are not happening at the same rate. Oh, I mean, I'm using one of the foe. I could use several of the foes, but lucky enough, I have Vital, which has you know, it has this thing of being, yeah, it offers me a chance to do uh, mod remapping. So let's set it to say 12. And so I'll go and I'll go and put a point here and another point here so that it's just zero. And then uh, this one, send it up here to four. So now this thing is happening three times in the time it is happening once for all the others. And now this one, I'm gonna make this happen twice. So this will create a different character to the, to our um, barber pole because some pitches will gonna go faster and some are gonna go slower. It'll make it a little more dissonant, but... my opinion also a lot more colorful and I really like this idea of having like it's like having you know three different shepherd stones one on top of the other with different rates it's nothing revolutionary really but it I mean it does make quite an effect I mean oh well, you don't you don't think it does it's really no, it's really your your opinions you know like this is just it's sound design I could be making sounds with a lot less effort and a lot less tinkering, but this is the way I do them. So, the, so that's the way I talk about making them on YouTube, right? So, well, this is this is it basically. There's uh, there could be a lot more, and uh, there's well, both in that pack and in the previous pack, which was called uh, Vital, not Vital and Expressive, was called Intensely Vital. I had used plenty of these techniques and others to make sounds if you are curious about how i made them uh, well please just write to me in the comments below you know there's a comments section for that and if there is something you want to know more you want to know how to do how i did it what what, what the approach was if there is uh, you you want me to talk about it well you just need to ask since you're here and you've heard me talking for now over 20 minutes, I thank you for your attention and your devotion to listening to me talk. And therefore, I tell you that if you haven't subscribed already, if you're one of the many non-subscribers who watch my channel, please do subscribe. You clearly like hearing me talk. This said, I invite you to check in the description a link to my Gumroad where you can uh, get yourself a bunch of these amazing sounds for Vital, some for free, some not, but really all at a bargain price. There's also a link to Deep Tons Production I'm cooperating with. We offer a bunch of audio related services, including one on one mentoring, and also a link to Hashkey's channel, who is doing my captions and is uh, really, really good with the DAW. More in the mixing and mastering side of things, but definitely knowing is stuff and there is also going to be some links to my music if you want to know what i try to do with my amazing sound design skills when i'm not talking to you or talking to a camera just as in this case all this said thanks again for your attention have a lovely weekend or whatever time of the week you're watching this and see you at my next video